Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our commercial crew astronauts. That was NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine unveiling NASA's nine newest astronauts on Friday. They'll be flying in commercial American spacecraft built by SpaceX and Boeing from American soil. For more, we turn to CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood from Merritt Island, Florida, just outside the Kennedy Space Center. So, Bill, the head of NASA called this a historic moment. Why is this announcement so special? Well, I think it is. If you stop and think about it, we haven't launched a new piloted spacecraft, a human-rated spacecraft in this country uh, since the space shuttle first took off back in 1981. Uh, so this is the first of a new breed of spacecraft. It's something that NASA is developing on a commercial basis, meaning uh, they're giving the companies a lot more control over how these vehicles are built uh, and designed, and presumably that's going to cost NASA less in the long run. And of course, being able to launch American astronauts on U.S. rockets from U.S. soil will be a first uh, since the space shuttle stopped flying back in 2011. You know, since then, America's been launching all of its astronauts on board Russian spacecraft, paying at, at the current contract more than $80 million a seat. So I think everybody at NASA is looking forward to getting U.S. spacecraft launching from U.S. soil again. That is certainly significant. And Bill, when you compare this mission to previous ones, how else will it be different? Well, quite a bit. You know, if you remember the space shuttle, that giant cargo bay, the wings, it landed like an airplane. These are capsules. It's almost like going back to Apollo, Gemini, Mercury. Uh, these are small capsules that don't, they do little more than carry a crew uh, from Earth up to the space station and then bring them safely back to Earth. Uh, SpaceX is gonna splash down in the ocean, uh, uh, reminiscent of how Apollo used to do it, Gemini and Mercury. Uh, the Boeing capsule is gonna make a land landing uh, like the Russian Soyuz does. It's gonna land in the Western United States. So very different class of vehicle, but again, the bottom line is they are American vehicles, and that's going to fill a big void in this nation's space program. And what exactly will the crews be doing in space? Do we know more about their mission? Yeah, you know, this is basically transportation. You know, I almost want to call it Uber to orbit. I mean, that's, that's misleading. But the idea here is NASA is contracted with these companies to provide a service, to get astronauts to and from the space station, and they're giving those companies a lot of control over how that's done. Uh, the companies then are free to use those same spacecraft on a purely commercial basis if they can find the customers. If foreign governments, perhaps, or university researchers, uh, you know, things like that, if they want to go up into space on their own, both of these companies could do it without any involvement from NASA. Uh, so it really is a, a sort of a commercial space race, if you want to think about it, uh, to get private sector more involved uh, in developing low Earth orbit. So, but when do we know? Do we know exactly when they're scheduled to lift off? Yeah, you know, this is this has been an ongoing uh, thing. The, the, the Boeing and SpaceX got these contracts back in 2014, and the flights have been repeatedly delayed in part because of congressional budget shortfalls and technical difficulties. But right now, uh, if all goes well, SpaceX hopes to launch an unpiloted mission at the end of the uh, in November, I should say. Boeing hopes to follow suit with an unpiloted flight late this year, early next, and then the first flights with these astronauts on board are tentatively targeted for April for SpaceX and a little later than that for Boeing. So hopefully by the spring of next year, you're gonna see some of those astronauts that were introduced today uh, going up into space on these spacecraft. That's not that far off. It'll be interesting to see how this no. goes down. I'm excited about it. You know, it looks like Boeing, SpaceX, and Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin are, are major players in a, in a new sort of commercial space race. What exactly uh, are they trying to do, and, and who really has the advantage point of this? Well, I guess if you had to give them an advantage here, it'd be SpaceX. I mean, they've been launching commercially now for several years. Uh, they've got billions of dollars in NASA contracts and others to resupply the space station uh, and to launch commercial satellites. Now, Boeing doesn't build rockets, but their space capsule uh, could very well be a player in future space tourism uh, or even in exploration missions or science missions. And as you mentioned, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin, uh, he's intent on building large space rockets that are going to compete directly with SpaceX and with United Launch Alliance. That's the other big rocket company in this country. Uh, to carry payloads and eventually people into orbit. The theme here is to privatize it, is to make private sector uh, involvement in space activity much more strong, intense than it has been in the past, with the goal of really not only servicing NASA and the U.S. military, uh, but also commercially, to get private citizens into space, to begin building commercial space stations, things like that, down the road, and really open up that frontier. 
that's what all this is aimed at. Whether we get there or not remains to be seen. Bill Harwood, it certainly is a new era for space and American space flight. So exciting, Bill. Thank you for joining us to talk about it. Sure thing.